Hello and welcome to the webinar um, on successful new product development, what does it take? I'm Selena, your host for this evening and I thank all of you, all the participants here for taking time off your busy schedules to be, uh, to join us for this webinar and I hope you'll find it uh, useful. So, successful new product development, what does it really take? Now, the reason why we've chosen this topic is because uh, Aspire has worked with several software vendors and software enabled businesses. And while many of them have multiple uh, product ideas, and some of the common issues that uh, we see them facing are, you know, the, the lack of uh, budget, uh, budget constraints, uh, engineering bandwidth constraints, and then not properly understanding the variables of uh, time, budget, and scope. And I'm sure that some of you attending this webinar would face some of these issues, and uh, we'll be able to address how you can overcome these and, you know, develop software, successful software products. Now, the way we structure this webinar is to you know, have one of our customers, Mango DVM, speak about their experience in building successful products. This will be followed by a brief discussion about their success and the business model. And then we'll be speaking about how to actually build successful products. Now, this whole thing would actually take about uh, 40 to 45 minutes, after which we would have uh, 10 to 15 minutes available for questions and answers. Uh, Q&A session. So um, I'd like to introduce our speakers for today, uh, Mr. Shankar Krishnamurthy, co-founder and CTO of Aspire Systems, who has more than uh, 13 years of experience in building software products, and Mr. Deepak Ramesh, co-founder and CTO of Mango DVM, who's uh, provided uh, consulting services in different verticals uh, and technologies and platforms. So. Uh, I, just before I start, I'd like to encourage all participants to type your questions in the uh, chat window on the right-hand corner of uh, your screens. So, thank you once again for joining us, and uh, over to you, Deepak. Thanks, Selina, and uh, uh, welcome, everyone. Uh, a bit about Mango DVM. Uh, we are a privately held company, uh, headquartered in Chennai, and uh, operating purely in India. Uh, we have gone to, through two rounds of uh, angel funding, which was facilitated by the uh, Indus Entrepreneurs, the Chennai chapter. Uh, we have got a whole host of uh, big names on our advisory board, ranging from uh, uh, Pandi Rajan of Mofai, Suresh Kalpati, XSSI, uh, KB Chandrasekhar of uh, Exodus and Jam Cracker, uh, Ram Raj from SIFI, and uh, Gopal Srinivasan of TVS Electronics. Uh, bit about our vision, uh, we, we aim to become a consumer brand in the digital uh, content landscape. Uh, we go through that by setting up a network of kiosks or digital vending machines. Uh, we are currently doing only music distribution or uh, retailing, but uh, we soon hope to branch out to other various other content types. Uh, we are pursuing other uh, delivery models also, hoping to set up uh, online business models as well as monetization to the uh, mobile networks. Um, a bit about myself, uh, originally a freelance technology consultant uh, working in various domains and platforms uh, ranging from insurance to e-governance to business intelligence. Uh, responsible for technology at Mango DVM, uh, uh, including the software, the servers and the deployment. Uh, on the software front, I handle the technology evaluation and the selection, uh, high level design, the roadmap and the rollout, uh, the typical CTO role, so to say. Uh, we are currently doing our uh, commercial retail launch using our own network of uh, uh, retail outlets uh, where we have our digital vending machines or kiosks. Uh, that should be starting from uh, early October. We are currently at the contracting stage with the various uh, 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 lo localities. Uh, we also partnered with two, uh, two other large retail chains for co-branded launches um, and this should be starting from the middle to late October. Uh, to give you a big, uh, quick background of the music business, uh, we the concept is pretty simple. We uh, it's basically setting up uh, a network of digital kiosks or uh, or uh, digital vending machines for the distribution of digital content. Uh, it's a bit of a marriage of the online and the brick and mortar world where we uh, we have uh, kiosks uh, set up in various places which uh, uh, store the digital content locally uh, and uh, deliver uh, deliver it to the con uh, deliver it to the consumer right uh, where he is um, onto his device of choice. Let it be a CD player or uh, uh, audio CD or uh, MP3 player or uh, mobile uh, uh, phone. Uh, 
coming into why we outsourced, uh, we obviously a very small company. We didn't have a big brand to uh, uh, to start with. So uh, we, it was very hard to attract and retain top talent. Uh, quick development was required after the angel funding so that uh, we could get to the market faster rather than uh, having to build up the team organically and uh, uh, take it from there. Also one of the key decisions to as outsource with Aspire was to uh, uh, take much more from them in terms of their existing uh, uh, vast experience and skills in project management and other areas rather than just uh, uh, taking in uh, the typical body shopping or the resourcing route. Uh, when you say the areas of responsibility that we outsource to Aspire, uh, uh, we've, uh, we've, we've basically outsourced the entire uh, server and client uh, software for the, uh, for the digital distribution and we've retained some of the other portions inside uh, primarily due to historical reasons rather than anything else. Uh, bit about the teams that are uh, uh, currently on the project uh, and from the Aspire end there is one project manager and three developers uh, basically involved with uh, low level design and development um, and from the Mango end we have one product manager and two testers and developers. Uh, we basically do the product sharing, the road mapping, the integration and the deployment testing. The, uh, the approach to outsourcing was pretty simple. We formed uh, uh, kind of a laundry list of uh, features that we required for uh, version 1.0. Uh, we stuck to the scope to a large extent because uh, uh, we obviously uh, um, were very clear about what we wanted to start with uh, uh, in our uh, launch. Uh, we estimated the budgets and the timelines along with Aspire and uh, contracted with Aspire along the same lines. Uh, we had a host of uh, planning meetings at Aspire for design and the technology selection uh, where we did about uh, uh, some small prototypes uh, which were testing out the technologies and uh, which helped in forming the final technology uh, selection. Then we migrated to remote management and in the development stage once uh, the development was flagged off. Uh, then from our offices we studied the check-ins on a regular basis to make sure that the coding approach is followed and the designs uh, uh, stuck to the uh, planned uh, methodologies. Uh, we also did continuous builds as part uh, at various stages so that we, uh, we made sure that the integration was done and uh, the deployment testing happened as much as possible uh, in order to ensure rapid feedback to the developers. We, we, we had a lot of interaction on features, the design and the development approach so that uh, uh, both parties were on the same plane. Uh, then we did uh, uh, manual testing at the moment, um, uh, primarily from a testing team at, uh, at, our, at our own site. We are trying to do, uh, uh, bring it to an automated stage very soon. Uh, we are currently at version 1.0 uh, which was released in uh, May 2008 and uh, this was released to a very closed uh, user group uh, primarily used for market testing. Uh, we are currently developing version 1.4 of the software which will be used for our large scale uh, uh, retail launch. Uh, we have plenty of features that are there on the roadmap uh, ranging from multiple other landscapes uh, let it be online or mobile or whatever as well as various additional content types that we are talking about uh, uh, like uh, video songs or other digital content like games and uh, stuff like that. Uh, to summarize the outsourcing contract with Aspire, I, I would say that uh, it's been pretty successful. Um, as I said earlier, Aspire brought a lot more onto the table rather than just uh, 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 bodies on the table. Uh, including their project management, the development and the UI in an, in an integrated uh, uh, environment rather than a single standalone uh, uh, unit, um, unit of skills. Uh, we were also able to rapidly flag off the development after contract rather than organically building the team by trying to hire from the local market and then uh, uh, um, uh, bringing them up to speed with the various design decisions that we've taken and also training them on the process and the other methodologies that we wanted to follow. Uh, we've also had uh, uh, very good experiences with having a stable team right through the project with, with in fact the project manager being constant uh, right through the project. Uh, it's been almost 10 months now since we st uh, started contracting from a, uh, from a calendar time frame and uh, um, uh, the continuity of the thinking and the stability in the development has really helped us in making sure that the, that the technology development is in a running on a stable mode at this point of time. And obviously the advantages of uh, lower attrition in a, in a bigger product company is, uh, has also helped us in this regard.
So, uh, thank you very much, uh, Deepak. Uh, thanks for the kind words and then sharing your experience uh, with us. And uh, again, uh, congratulations in terms of uh, releasing the product successfully and then uh, rolling it out into the market. Uh, you, uh, one thing which I noticed is you certainly have a very nice and uh, impressive board, uh, like uh, uh, comprising highly experienced and a skillful, uh, uh, highly experienced and then very successful entrepreneurs on your board, and uh, I'm sure you will be tapping their expertise. Uh, going through this presentation, I have a few questions. Probably, like I would uh, like to uh, start with uh, those questions before I get into my presentation. Uh, uh, hope that's okay. Yeah, that's good. Okay. See, if you really look at the product, it's uh, basically uh, downloading the music from uh, Chaos and then playing it on your uh, on the mobile. So, and uh, if you look at the technology perspective, from the technology perspective, downloading music and then playing it from a mobile is not something new. It's already existing and it's proven. There is uh, iPod which is there for quite some time, and then you can, uh, if you look at all the new media, all the mobiles, it comes with the default media players. But uh, what is uh, different here is the concept of uh, taking this to masses, especially like uh, when you say masses, like uh, people who can quickly download and then play it on the mobile from a kiosk is uh, something new. How did you get this idea? Uh, that's a very good question, Shankar. Uh, uh, basically, the, uh, the vision of the organization can be summarized in a single sentence. Uh, uh, basically, we want to break down the artificial barriers of access to computers or the access to internet, especially in the changing uh, landscape where the uh, uh, the consumption of music today is shifting to a digital environment rather than the uh, existing analog or the CD environment uh, that we talked about. Uh, uh, this is possibly something new to uh, you guys out there in the West, but uh, out here in India, uh, uh, the access to computers is extremely limited as well as the as the penetration of internet and uh, uh, um, uh, we, we wanted to make sure that uh, uh, the, the mass market was able to um, uh, utilize this uh, shifting landscape as and uh, and uh, take it to the uh, uh, take it to all the consumers and uh, um, uh, uh, and enable them to uh, to still continue to use uh, their music uh, like how they used to uh, do it before uh, obviously, with the penetration of uh, mobiles with MP3 players and stuff like that, there is definitely a shift uh, to the uh, complete digital landscape, but the availability of music is still a question today. So uh, we thought we should marry the uh, um, the uh, both the worlds of both the online uh, portal world as well as the kiosk model, as well as the brick and mortar model, so to say, and uh, uh, take it to the market in a much wider fashion. Okay, very good. Impressive. Uh, that, that's good. Well, uh, it's uh, important to uh, idealize the product and it's also important that like you need to validate the idea before you start spending a lot of time and effort into building the product. Right? I'm sure you would agree yep. with uh, the importance of validating an idea before you actually start building it. How did you validate this uh, idea? I would uh, definitely agree with you in terms of uh, testing out uh, the product uh, with the market. Uh, uh, what we did, as I said, was uh, prepare a quick laundry list of all the features that we required for 1.0 and uh, uh, we obviously realized that uh, uh, we needed to take it to the market and test it out and uh, uh, it's more a business innovation rather than a technology innovation like, uh, uh, like we obviously realized. So, uh, from a technology standpoint, uh, things were pretty stable in the understanding the requirements uh, uh, to take it to the market. And uh, and hence we uh, we we took it to the 1.0 stage uh, uh, through some uh, uh, rapid development process where you guys obviously helped in uh, uh, bringing people to the table and making sure that uh, delivery happened in a uh, in a successful fashion. Uh, and then we launched in a very close user group where we we uh, we kept it to some minimal outlets and uh, uh, made sure that. Um, uh, we got feedback from the market as much as possible, but obviously you do, you do realize that uh, we we also want uh, to become a large uh, retail brand, and hence uh, uh, we made sure that uh, we tested it in a minimal uh, fashion as possible, so that uh, uh, we don't uh, uh, we don't do any br uh, brand damage at a later point of time. Okay, 
Sir, when you say minimal testing, was that kind of like a phased rollout or is it a kind of like a statewide rollout? Uh, I would uh, more say it, it was uh, it was really a very uh, limited rollout uh, where the limitation was more from an artificial uh, limitation rather than any uh, business or uh, technological limitation. So we made sure that we launched in only about uh, two to three sites and then uh, uh, closely interacted with the customer where uh, we ourselves spent time at those outlets and made sure that uh, we understood what the customer customer was going through, a bit like uh, on the field uh, user interaction uh, experiences and made sure that the software was user friendly for the uh, uh, for the people to navigate and buy content and uh, uh, and then take it from there. Okay, so it's a kind of like a beta testing? And kind of like a beta testing but in a very limited fashion and uh, beta testing from a, a non-IT uh, savvy or non-tech uh, uh, savvy customer so to say. Okay, okay, wonderful. I think that, that definitely, this kind of gunslinger events definitely help in terms of improving the product quality and then also help in terms of studying the end user or customer uh, reactions. I'm sure like uh, that's definitely helpful. Uh, uh, one uh, one more question, uh, if you don't mind. Uh, see, you have mentioned that like uh, it took about like uh, 10 months, uh, it's about 10 months in this journey right yep. from... Uh, uh, you are uh, maybe like uh, right from the product development to as of now and they have uh, released 1.0 and then you are going to have two co-branded launches. So how is this journey like uh, before you started obviously you would have had some kind of expectation but now you have released the product into the market and uh, has there been a, uh, any change in thought process or what kind of learnings did you have in this uh, journey? Yeah, uh, that's a really good question. Uh, if I were to look back to the two-page business plan that we had before funding and uh, where we stand right now and what our strategies are, uh, obviously you, would, you do realize that we have... Uh,